Oh, well, hello. Fancy seeing you lot here. Thanks for being with me. I really appreciate it. Actually, no. Uh, Nottinghamshire today, not far from home, which means I didn't have to get up mega early to travel somewhere, which is absolutely brilliant for me. I actually got a lion for once. Stapleford is one of the few towns left in Notts that didn't get a video. So uh, I'm out to rectify that today. So there's gonna be a lot of revisits today, places I've been to already. But equally, I've managed to find some in the sort of surrounding area that makes sense that I've never been to before. So we're gonna cover them as well. So Sandy Acre, Sandham by Dale, Kirk Hallam, I'm going through all of that today. So you'll be able to see all of those in this video, which is good. So in Bramcut, that's where I've started Bramcut. Uh, and started at this, which is called a White Lion. Uh, now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Dale, it's just another generic Green King pub. Well, let me tell you, there is nothing generic about this one. It is an absolute beauty. A wonderful little pub to start at. Then we're going to walk around the outskirts and eventually we will end up in Stapleford, or as the locals refer to it around here, Stabo. Don't ask me why, I, I don't want to know. Uh, we will go through Stapleford, we're meeting our buddy James and our buddy Kathy. hopefully later on. Holly's going to join me after work, because she can just jump on a tram and get to here. So let's crack on with the day. White Lion in Bramcote is pub number one of the day. I, I absolutely love this, there's nothing generic about it. It's a Green King as well, they've, they've maintained everything about it that's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful little pub. There's always a good little selection of guest sales on in here. So you see, you're going to Green King, and sometimes it's sort of soul destroying. You go and you see Green King IPA and Abba A, you think, why, why can't we have something else? And in here, you've got plenty of choice of other things. But if you wonder through it, look what gorgeous little pub it is in general. It's just a super little place. And more ales on up here. Look, Castle Rock, obviously local to ourselves around the Nottingham area. But you won't go wrong, trust me, you won't go wrong with this pub at all in the slice. It's just a phenomenal little place and I'm very pleased to have managed to include it in today's video and show you all just why I love it so much. So one of the other glorious factors about the White Lion in Bram is its beer garden space. Uh, it is a fantastic space in the summer out here. It's absolutely brilliant. So there are a few days before Halloween at the moment, so they're all setting up the, uh, the marquee for Halloween. But look at the, uh, the beer garden space. Obviously I'm filming this, like I said, in October, so there are normally benches uh, and things out here in this space. But it's just such a lovely pub. Um, sort of since the early 1800s, we estimate about 1805 uh, was when it was actually built. But they do reckon that there was an inn on this site beforehand. So it's been a pub in the area at this place for quite a long time. And what a great pub it is. So as you wander down, uh, I think this still counts as Bramcote. It's a Bramcote Island, uh, as they call it, a big roundabout on Brian Clough Way. So the Green King. A managed Green King. Uh, this one's it's a Flaming Grill brand, as you can see by the sign up there. So it's got all the classic Green King drink deals on and stuff as well. Every time I've been in there, it's always been very friendly, very welcoming sort of place. Definitely more of a locals type pub. But that is going to be stop two of the day, the Sherwin Arms. So yeah, it's, a, uh, it's a Flaming Grill uh, pub, so it does all the food challenge uh, stuff as well. But it's a managed Green King, so as you'd expect, it's the, uh, the Abbott and the IPA. But I've gone for this in here, Prior Life. That I've never had before, never seen. Good lineup of lilies uh, and stuff. Bar side with a pool table. Does uh, they do look like perhaps need some more stuff to help clean up? But yeah, pool table on that side. Massive dining area um, to the other side. It is a it is a friendly place. You can watch all the uh, all the sport and stuff in them. Normal lineup you expect: Peroni, Madri, San Miguel, Coors, Shamba, Carling. You know, but we, we can't have it. And a guide doggy, lovely guide doggy. So that is yeah, what you'd expect really to find in a flaming grill. Isn't it? Start number three uh, means I have dipped slightly into Stapleford itself, but not Stapleford sort of town centre. This one is, is way up on its own. Uh, it's called the Man of Iron, and it's, it's literally right up here on the outskirts of Stapleford. So while I'm on the way round, getting the outskirts done, it makes more sense to do this now and carry on with the day than it did doing it any other way round. So Man of Iron is technically Stapleford, but it's towards Trowell and Ilkeston uh, and all of that. So it's probably the closest one you'll get to being on the, uh, the over the Derbyshire border uh, of the day, apart from the ones that actually are in Derbyshire. So there you go. It makes sense to me anyway. So stunt number three is the Man of Iron, and it is a revisit, done it before. So yeah, just as I remember it, this one is what you call a friendly and welcoming community local. So no ales on. Um, it's uh, good choices on the keg stuff though, uh, and the prices, there are some unbelievably cheap uh, drink steals or something. I went for half a, a dark fruit Magnus uh, in this one, one pound eighty-five. 
So it's a real good deal. Pool tables, dartboards, plenty of space in the thing. And yeah, some good uh, keg choices and stuff. Obviously, we're geared up for, as I said, it's October, geared up for Halloween. So stop number three, tick in the bag. So as usual, uh, people's opening hours, I'm playing havoc with my day. Some that open until three that I wanted to do next, and it's only like half two. Some that open until four, some that open until five, which is a real pain in my rear uh, because there's, there's no way of me doing it and then getting to a town and getting round if they don't until, I don't understand why people don't until that time, personally. But if they don't, they don't. At least I know now and I'm not turning up to be disappointed. So at least I know now, so I can plan around. So. We did Ockbrook uh, a while back, but this on the outskirts of Ockbrook wasn't walkable from when we were we were on foot doing it. It is a stone house. Uh, it's, a, it's got a lovely beer garden on this one. Uh, yeah, stone house at the Bartle. It's called Bartlewood Lodge. So it's just down the road from the Cat and Fiddle, which is on the outskirts of Ilkeston, which I never got done before. So I figured perfect time to squeeze this in and do it now before I go down to the Cat and Fiddle. So it's top four of my day, and it is the first new pub of the day. Stone House at the Bartlewood Lodge. It's nice in it. It's, uh, it's got plenty of space. The carvery has the sort of feed myself. A little tiny carvery uh, and it was really, really good. Really fresh actually. Much better than the Toby ones. We've got a good setup. So pizza station and stuff. Carvery. Good tap station. No ales on. But it's a nice looking pub to be fair. Everyone in here is really friendly. Hazy Jane from Brewdog on which always keeps me happy. Low ceilings, beams and a bell for uh, calling for the food apparently. Yeah. Not a bad little stop up actually, glad I called in. Next one along then is, it's in uh, Kirk Hallam, which is part of Ilkeston, a uh, little villagey type part of Ilkeston. I am well overdue a night out in Ilkeston, aren't I? They always get me so drunk though, that's the problem. And like, I'm hanging for days when I go out in Ilkeston. It's one of my favourite places, it honestly is. So this one is Cat and Fiddle, uh, and it's yeah, up here on the outskirts of Ilkeston. Whopping great beer garden and play area and stuff up here, but Cat and Fiddle will be stop five. Uh, of the day so far. Let's work our back way around to Stanton by Dale, Sandy Acre, and then in onto Stapleford. This brings up my third uh, Green King connotation of the day. It's not a flaming grill, it's not a tenanted house, it's, uh, it's a managed, it's a big community type pub. This they do food on one side again, uh, well, it's food all over, but it's, it's split into sort of two sides. Like Central Bar, as you can see, it's, it's Abbott uh, rubbish for the, for the hand pulls, but they always do Green Kings, they do always have a decent enough selection of the taps. You can watch all the sport and stuff in it, they're very friendly, plenty of uh, plenty of people already around early doors. Uh, and yeah, actually, uh, for where it is uh, situated, uh, it, it's bang on, it does, it does the job you would expect to do, pool table and stuff over the far side. Decent food to this. Show you around the rest of it while we're here, what else is on? So they always have, they always got a good bottle selection and stuff. Nice to see some, uh, some Brewdog Punk IPAs and stuff up there. Thatcher's Tower, Neck on and stuff on as well. Pool table and stuff at the back said Forest Palace playing on Monday. I know you, we, we've obviously the Forest, we've obviously already won that game by the time you watch this, I'm sure. Who knows? Great little pub this day. Into the picturesque little village of Stanton by Dale. Well, let's face it, anything with the name Dale has got to be good, isn't it? No. More than likely not. Uh, however, the village does look very, very nice. It's very quaint, uh, very sweet. Lots of little old cottages and things like that. The next port of call is the Stanhope Arms. That is going to be stopped six of my day. And it is. Uh, another new pub on the crawl, not been done before, so that takes me to three, well, three revisit and three new so far for the day, so splitting it nicely. Uh, there's one more in Stanton by Dale called the Checkers, which will make another new one, and then another new one after that before I get into San Diego, where I think everything from there until we perhaps get to a club later on, if we can get in, will be revisits. But next, the Stanhope Arms, stop number six. Absolutely brilliant little pub. Uh, this is absolutely love it. Some uh, got some ales on pure gold is for purity, so I've gone for that. I've not had that one. Landlords, stand up pale. I wouldn't have known what that was. Could have tried it though. But the, uh, the little greeter down here is called Presley, and he is an absolute superstar. One of the best greetings I've ever had in a pub. The low beams, ceilings, seeing and stuff. It's gorgeous in here. Absolutely gorgeous. I love pubs like this. They are some of my absolute favourites. Show you what's on the rest of the taps and stuff as well. Presley was just, uh, he was just off shouting, so he's been, it's hard to be quiet for a minute while we get in, but it's a, it's a gorgeous little pub. I absolutely love these low ceiling places. Did you get in trouble? Yeah. Did you get in trouble? Well. You're too, you look, the butter wouldn't melt, would you? You're far too sweet to get in trouble. You get your biscuit. But this is a, <laughs> there's an offer. But what, a, what an absolutely phenomenal little place this is. With an extra, wow. You wouldn't even know this extra seating area was here. 
But yeah, look at this. Uh, this is what I love about village pubs so often, is that they've got still little secret alcoves or extra bits upstairs, and this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, aside from the dog called Presley, they've also got a cat called Elvis. There's a theme here, isn't there? Brilliant places. What an absolutely brilliant little pub the Stanhope Arms is. I love everything about it. I love those beams, I love the low ceilings. That little upstairs room, so if you go in, make sure you go and have a, have a sit up there, because that was lovely. A minute walk around the corner though, uh, and I'm already loving the Checkers Inn. So this is the other village pub here, and I'm, re I'm, I'm loving this already for two reasons. One, on their sign there, as you can probably make out, it says, proper pub at the bottom. Proper pub, you know I love a proper pub. And my other one, national award winners for our dog friendliness. How they've got a greeter like Presley. He was awesome, he was so cute. So the Checkers Inn, uh, there's another new one on me, and it's top seven of my day so far. But Sometimes, then exploring the outskirts in these villages, you find some of the gems, the real gems uh, of the pubs. So yeah, looking forward to this. I'm gonna absolutely love it in here from the boards outside tonight. And I was right, it's a beautiful pub, this. They've also got their own uh, campsite at the back. You can book pitches uh, and things like that. And as with the San Jose Palms, I was greeted in the perfect way by this little face. Look, and what is your name? Sydney. Sydney, hi Sydney. Sydney is a sweetheart. And there is another one as well. And your name is? Frank. Frank. Sydney and Frank, and they are awesome, as well as, look, it's nice to see a, uh, a Beaver Town beer on that's not just Neck Oil. Neck Oil as well, but Gamma Ray is actually a much better beer for me, as well. So it's nice to see that on. Landlady's a lovely lady. She's, she's, she's hiding, she doesn't want to be in. Look, Gamma Ray on, but it's, it's a wicked little pub. This, this gentleman never swears in his life, I like him. I like him, he's a, he's a nice fellow. But, <laughs> what, what's that? Get, get it in. Get it in. Dudwali and Son scaffolding. So if you need any scaffolding done, hit this man up. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so we should do this more. We should do this more. Get more advertising in the videos. It's good, isn't it? But yeah, what a brilliant little pub. This is a great little village. Two fantastic little pubs. And some fantastic doggos. So it's just a proper pub outside. Proper pub grub this. Evening meals. You want to come in here and have these? Slow cooked lamb shank. Oh, I love a lamb shank. Homemade steak pie. Can't go wrong with stuff like that, can you? This is a, this is a great little pub, this, honestly. Super, super little menu, that. that. That is a proper pub food menu. A super pub, super people. Uh, landlady, she's been there 23 years. And it shows, it's well respected. It's such a lovely little place, but I was told categorically on my way out, do not miss the poppy tree. That is here, look at some of these, the pin badges in the poppy tree. Donations welcome, obviously, for poppy day coming up. I'm in October, that won't be long, will it? 11th of November and stuff. So... Make sure you uh, you come down here and see. Yeah, it's a forest one. Look, some forest ones in here. I'm happy with them. Oh, some wonderful little pin badges in an absolutely wonderful little pub. My final new pub uh, for the moment. Anyway, hopefully we can get into a little club in Staplewood I've never done uh, later. My final new pub of the day then uh, for me is the Seven Oaks Inn and Restaurant, which is literally out on. It's, it's the road that this road is going to lead me towards Staplefield, where I can get rid of the car finally then. So it comes from, yeah, Stanton by the hour I've just come from, uh, and Ilkeston that way uh, to Sandy Acre. It's on that road. So, I've, yeah, is it hidden? It's not hidden because it's out here in plain sight, but you know what I mean? It's not necessarily one of those that is always on the, the beaten track. Uh, and that's why I do what I do to show you that there are hidden gems all over this, uh, this country that you should definitely be seeking out that you wouldn't necessarily know are there until I trawl around and find them. It's a little pub, this is. So it's just in Derbyshire, it's got a DE postcode, so it's literally as far as close to Nottinghamshire border though, as you could possibly hope to find. Um, it's a great place. Some, uh, plenty of ales and stuff to choose from. There are a few that have just gone, they are in the process of changing. Fucking little boozer in general. And, found this there, uh, found this quite good. Timothy Taylor's Land on it. A special Halloween, uh, Halloween themed pump, it was nice. So no pedigree, Hobgoblin, there's a Sharps, Twin Coast, and Twin Coast is a good beer as well, that. But it's a lovely little place. So apparently it was closed uh, as a pub for quite a while and they've only just reopened a few months ago. So Salt Loom, Loom Pale is a, is a really good one uh, to have on as well. But it's a, it's a lovely little pub. Really nice, uh, really nice people running it. It's, it's what I talk about, isn't it? It's one of those sort of hidden hidden gem type places. It's got a fantastic beer guy outside, uh, outside there and stuff as well. So top notch, do come and check this out because it's, uh, it's a really friendly, banging little place. And some good ale choices on. I'm back near the, uh, the red side of the trend now, definitely, you can, you can feel it, I can, I can smell the red side of the trend coming. Oh, a great little pub, again, nice to have, uh, nice to have ticked that one off, because I've driven past that a load of times before, 
when we're only doing a Nottinghamshire pub call, not we weren't doing anything else outside here, and that's uh, just over the Derbyshire border with a DE postcode, so couldn't squeeze it in on there. So it's nice to have finally got in there. Lovely, lovely ladies uh, running that. But Sandy Acre into now. The Bluebell would have been first up in Sandy Acre, but apparently that is currently shut, so can't do the Bluebell. Leads me on then to the Plough, being stop eight of the day. James is in here, he's been patiently waiting. Holly might be here as well by now. Who knows, but the Plough, stop eight of the day. Uh, sizzling pub. I have never in my life seen this before. Dara Dam, gluten-free lager. So you know me, and I'm tapped. I would try it, so it's nice to find something new in a, in a Sicily because Doom Bar was the, uh, was the beer or uh, the, the ale offering. But uh, my buddy James got his badge in already. Look, he's, uh, he's well, he's well and truly happy to be a star for the rest of the day. So we'll have a wander around on the way out while we go. Look, look at him, he's training well. Look, look, he's taking them. Look, training well. It's dog friendly in a super little place, yes, lad. Wicked little place, so yeah, Doom Bar on the thing. So it's a classic, uh, classic sizzling chain as you would expect. Looks very much like it would. But some beautiful doggos uh, in here. It's quite a big spacious one. Uh, it's family friendly, food orientated type pub, isn't it? So that's quite good though. We wander down further into Sandy Acre, joined by her, uh, yeah. So James, he's still got his, his Stone Island badge on, he hasn't lost it yet. And we're at the White Lion, which is these days a craft union pub, apparently. This was not a craft union. <laughs> this was not a craft union pub the last time we came. But at least if it's a craft union, we know what we're getting. Stone Island galore. So the White Lion, I think it's stop. I'm going to say nine of the day thus far. Uh, Red Lion is shut, uh, shut down altogether. Blue Bell obviously shut temporarily. Hopefully that will reopen. But we've got the bridge left in San Diego, and that's it for San Diego these days. Not anything else left here, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, the Red Lion was a was a, a, a really old booze that sat on the the crossroad uh, just up here on the left hand side, and that is well and truly boarded up and gone. On we go anyway. Uh, these days, a craft union, which always does mean uh, good selection of lilies. Uh, so I've got a tropical one because I've never actually untapped that. Uh, and you know what else? Pool table, plenty of screens. Pretty standard selection on. But they do have Timothy Taylor's Landlord on, which is a good one. Yeah, it looks like they've had, had or got Doom Bar on on the other side as well. We're, we're going to have a seat on the other side. It's a good size pub, so we're, we're sat in a lounge. So it is a, uh, it's a good size booze. They've also got a good beer garden uh, thing on the back. But yeah, that is, that is the white line in San Diego. So I don't know when it became a craft union, but definitely when we did this two and a half years ago, it wasn't a craft union pub. So they've obviously bought that. They, they are expanding all the time on a craft union, so they've obviously bought it in the last couple of years. So the final one of San Diego, before we literally get to the bottom of Stapleford and work our way through what they said locally refer to as Stabo, is the bridge. Uh, again, it's another revisit. We have done this uh, a couple of years ago now. Uh, massive great pub, this. It, ne it did used to have some ales on. Uh, I've been told it hasn't had any ales on for a while, but we will find out. But it's a big old, uh, big old play. James's mate, Barnes, he's just mess. He's a good lad. I like him more than James already, I've just met him. So it should be a, should be a nice, fun evening working our way through Stapleford. The bridge is up next. <laughs> uh, massive great pub, like I said. So this is uh, the one end of the place, like family eater and stuff. So Doom Bar on, on the old Rosie cider. You know I love an old Rosie cider. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. So it's dog friendly. And you are the sweetest, aren't you? I've met some, I've met some really sweet dogs uh, today. So pretty standard stuff on the taps and stuff in there. And if you come down to this end, it's more bar, pub uh, sort of thing at this end. The bar end, pool table, screens, dartboard. Uh, and bit. But it's always been a decent boozer. It's always a, it's always a nice friendly gas list. So we're moving on. Right, so we worked around uh, towards Stablewood. Buonissima. That's, that's what I'm going with. Buonissima, which we've never actually done before. So it is a sixth new place. I always thought this is more of a restaurant, but apparently it isn't. It's a bar, bistro, uh, uh, and restaurant and stuff as well. So we're gonna do Buenissima on the way into Stapleford. Get it done. Cool little place, we've got a quiz going on, so I'm not gonna talk. It's a, uh, it's a swanky, uh, nice thing little place. Free, uh, free offering and stuff. On, on about uh, High Voltage from Brixton, Cruise Campo and Moretti on. It's a nice little place, but yeah, I always thought it was a restaurant. But you can just stop in for a bar. And they're having a, a decent little quiz. Right, we've made Stapleford, and right at the bottom of the, I, I suppose you call it like Stapleford High Street. Uh, yeah, I suppose it is, yeah, we'll call it Stapleford High Street. It's got a scaffolding up at the, mid, the Midlands. 
this is the uh, this is kind of the lads 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 uh, type pub. This is the fun pub of uh, Stubbo for sure at this end. Certainly in the Midland, very popular, very friendly, very nice place from what I remember. Obviously having a little bit of a uh, little bit of work done at the moment. Then we're gonna work our way up the high street and get the rest of the stable for done. It's a proper locals local. It's like I like it. It's, it's friendly. Everyone's welcoming. Right mix of people. Pool table up on the top. Dart boards. Plenty of TV screens all the way around the pub for whatever you could want. Neck all on, decent selection uh, of other uh, bits and pieces on good beer garden. It's, it's just a decent boozer. It's one of those, like I said, salt of the earth. Salt of the earth type pubs where people of all walks of life come to enjoy themselves to all extent and they're all welcome and it's good. Not far to, uh, not far to walk to, uh, to the next one. It, it's a video, but you know, you're right. Not far to walk to the next one. This is uh, James's favourite pub in Stapleford. Uh, Landlord Pete is a, a close personal friend of James. This one is, this one is the West End. So yeah, a great, great little booze when we went in the first time. So we are back here for a second stint. Nice looking gaff to be fair. Pool table round the back. So it's pool night tonight in uh, in Stapleford. So pool match going on. Sofa press, that dark berry sofa press actually all right. Cutler bales on in here. I've never had old golden end before. So I'm having that, despite the fact that I would absolutely love a Camden Pale, so I love Camden Pale, and it is a nice, friendly establishment. It's, I've also never had this, uh, never had that before, I was, I could have gone with that, but as long as I can, as long as I think something new on untapped, I'm usually happy, don't I? I'm not all right with this, though. I'm not, I'm not all right with that. It's a five minute walk, five minute walk, it's all it is. Feels longer, but it's not. Five minute walk. The Admiral, Sir John Belay's Warren, is the Weatherspoons of Stapleford. It's a big old, it's a big old place this, and there are not many Weatherspoons in the country, are there, that boast a full-size cannon in the middle of them. Yeah, you heard me, a cannon. There is an actual cannon in the, uh, in the middle of this pub. I'll show you in a minute. Take my word for it. Look, there is a massive great cannon in the middle of the pub. That's one carpet. I found, I found two carpets, but look. Massive great cannon. It's a proper cannon in the middle of the pub. Many a drunk girl has probably sat on that thinking they're funny, but you know. Admiral, it's a good spoon, to be fair. It is a decent spoon. So this is the other carpet. So that one, that one there is way better than this one, isn't it? I don't know why, I never knew certain spoons have two different carpets. It's really wigged me out because I feel like I've now got to go back and film a lot of the others to try and get those second carpets in. So it has wigged me out a little bit. I might have, have to double check on that, I don't really know. So, But there are some guest ales on, as you would expect with this most. I'm pretty sure they're still in the middle of their beer festival, as it stands at the moment. So, well, that, that was a moment, so. Phoenix, that's a, that's a guest. Yeah, beer festival, still in the middle of their beer festival. It's on the 20th of October. And as we come along, on this end. So, I'm going with this cold snap from Shepherd Moon. That's not the worst of it. Isn't it? So, there you go, a weather spoons with a cannon right in the middle of it and two different carpets again. So I wanted right to the other end of uh, Stableford where next up is the awesome jockey. One that I'm honestly, I absolutely loved it in here. Uh, last time we came, I thought it was an absolute belter of a place. So I'm very glad to be back seeing this again. Then we're going down there and right round to another couple. Uh, and then we've got Larry's still to get in tonight. The awesome jockey is, this is the camera pub of Stableford without a shadow of a doubt. Some great ales on offer in here from what I hear, from what I remember. And it's just a, it's just a belting pub this. So, well and truly happy to be back up here at the, the far end of town from where we started at the Midlands. Opposite end of the same road, but it's all one road. Walk down and you get here. So, horse and jockey. And I think it's stop 14 of the day. But as per usual, I've got no clue how many it really is. What did I tell you? The ale selection here is absolutely bang on. So no matter what you want, that Heady logo, so I had that a couple of days ago somewhere. Double shot of stout is absolutely amazing, by the way. But being a Forest fan, uh, I'm always happy to see a bit of brown cloth. So I've gone for that in here. Bravo and Smash. There are some phenomenal offerings on the, uh, on the things in here. Good beer board, which actually tells you what, what's high and what's low on it. But it's, it's just a beautiful looking pub altogether. It's a, it's a lovely looking pub. No matter where you want to look, it just, it feels like a fantastic establishment where it, 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 it's good on beer, but it's good on atmosphere, it's good on people, it's, it's good on everything. It's probably my favorite pub in Stableford, if I'm honest. 
and that's not just for the beers, but for the whole overall vibe and the whole ambiance of it. I absolutely love the place. Top notch, this one. Just definitely, if you're ever in Stapleford, 100% colour change. If you're not in Stapleford, get to Stapleford. Sort it out. I totally forgot to even show you the other end of the bus. You want the, uh, the blue moon and stuff on? Left lane, always good. Huckerback, Nathan Salt is, uh, is a good one. It's just a great boozer, to be fair. It's a great place. I love it, man. I find this one of the saddest stories of Stapleford because this old rock apparently used to be one of the most thriving boozers in uh, Stapleford. It's been sat there like that for years. Empty, derelict, doing absolutely nothing. And that could once again thrive, I'm sure. Uh, this one, there was the, the Feathers Tavern was just here. That's, that's flats now, so that one's gone altogether forever. And I'm reasonably sure that that at one point was a licensed premise. It might be a police station most recently, but I think that was a licensed premises as well at some point. So on this little junction here, you had these, uh, these three. But yeah, the Old Rock, that one was called. Uh, and it was one of Stateford's most thriving boosters at one point. So sad to see the state of it. Uh, James and Barzi have gone. So we'll move on. Uh, we've got three left to do, I think, for the rest of the time. With the Old Cross shut, we've had to wonder, but we have found uh, the club that I've never been before. So it's called the Old Mill Club, uh, and it is, yeah, it's here. Oh, honestly, this is hidden, hidden away down a back street. why well, I never knew it was here before, but it does say open, so let's, uh, let's try the door. Door is open, so we'll go in. League Paul Nut, that's probably why it's open. But the Old Mill Club then makes it seven new establishments for the day, which I'm happy with. Show you about the Old Cross, because I thought it was all right in there, but yeah, quarter past nine, if you're going to be able to be open, then we can't do it, so it doesn't make the video. In all honesty, it, it, it's got social club vibes, obviously it is a club, but it, it's, it's a great little place. It's got really nice buttons, so cheap as well, so cheap. So it's a pool sale, whatever else is it, so it's league pool night, but a couple of on. Uh, locals as well, one from Shipstons, one from a Blue Monkey, which is always nice to see. Uh, no, sure I don't see that often, often on a bar, oh, it's dog friendly. And it's just, a, it's just a nice little club, you know, this. That is not a real spider, in case anyone was worried, by the way. It's actually Halloween decorations, but honestly, no, I'm glad we came up here and found it. It's not easy to find it, as you know where you're going, but do come and find it. Price isn't so cheap, beer's good, and it's open. Right, well, that leaves us with the Old Cross out of commission for tonight, and this is one to do, which is Larry's. So we've done this before. Uh, it's a proper party venue, this. So, uh, yeah, it's a 12 o'clock only, even on a Thursday according to Google. And it's just here, looks like this. Larry's, I mean, I'm not a fan of the carling symbols, as you can probably imagine. But that is the final port of call for Stable for tonight. Let's get Larry's done, and let's get me home before I turn into a pumpkin. The thing you can be sure of in here as a Forest fan is you're not gonna be not entertained by some of the memorabilia. I'm gonna take you and show you some of it. It's so cheap, and it? it really is. The great cobs as well from my ear, but join me, join me, walk down here. Have a look at some of the, uh, the wonderful, so the wonderful forest memorabilia on the, uh, on the walls and that stuff in here, sign shirts. Andy Reid, forest absolute legend, Andy Reid. Stuart Pearce, obviously, on the, uh, on the walls. Brian Clough, the man. When we, when we were actually a good side, when we won the, won the, won the European Cup, or the Champions League, so you kids who are watching this, we don't know what that is, but as a forest fan, you can't not be entertained by some of the, uh, some of the stuff that's on the walls. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pool stuff down the end. It's a, it's, a, it's a party. It's, a, it's an late night party venue. It's friendly. It's cheap. It's full of forest memorabilia. So I wonder I love it. What a great place to finish. So thanks for watching. That was uh, Stapleford. Please hit subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you tomorrow with Stabridge.